Support for this podcast comes from Goodman. Goodman Manufacturing Company LP produces a complete line of refreshingly affordable air conditioning and heating equipment. All Goodman brand products are designed, engineered, and assembled in the United States. For more information, visit GoodmanMFG.com. The most important thing is you got to build value on every call. So on a trouble call, it's a little bit more difficult because the customer's probably a higher stress, higher anxiety situation. They want to take you right to the problem and they want to know pricing right away. Um, it's, it's your job to be able to still try to get on some sort of a level. And, and we try to look at it from our company standpoint anyway. Uh, we want to try to spend 20 minutes with the customer before presenting pricing. So the biggest thing is, and, and that's not always possible, especially you get the type A customer and um, things like that. So sometimes you got to go purpose over procedure, but the, the biggest thing is building value inside of what you are offering them. Welcome to The Successful Contractor, powered by Success Group International, a show for residential contractors about residential contractors. We chronicle business journeys, share insights, and celebrate successes in this wonderful industry. I'm your host, Bob Houchin. Welcome back to The Successful Contractor, 50 episodes. It's hard to believe that we've hit so many. Um, If you're joining us on podcast, thank you so much for listening, and thank you for listening to all the previous shows that have have been available. Uh, if you're here joining us on YouTube, very glad to have you on this new medium. We're excited about the reach that it provides us. Um, so thank you for joining us. Um, I'm also very, very excited to bring to you an interview with John Sen, an electrician for Wire One Electric in Des Moines, Iowa. Now, this interview with John kicks off what I'm calling our Crown Champion series. Uh, And I have several more great interviews lined up with successful technicians, electricians, plumbers, salespeople in both uh, HVAC and hopefully roofing here soon too. Uh, In the SGI world, we call a crown champion, at least in the electrical industry, is an electrician who sells and installs over $500,000 worth of electrical work or services. Uh, In John's case, he did a little bit more than that. John sold and installed. $1.26 $1.26 million. Highly, highly impressive, especially in middle America. Uh, so in this interview you're going about to watch, we're going to learn John's background. We're going to learn how he uh, talks to customers, how he builds value, how he builds their trust, how he takes very good care of them. Um, and we're going to learn about the Wire One team and just how sensational they are. So very excited to bring you this interview. I think you're going to find it highly enjoyable. John's a neat guy, high energy guy, and I'm sure you will take away a nugget or two. John, thank you so much for being on the show today. Uh, Could you please share with everyone uh, your name, where you're working at, and uh, where you guys are located? Absolutely. Uh, Pleasure to meet you as well, Bob. I am John Sen from Des Moines, Iowa. I work at Wire One, been there for a little bit over two years, and we're out of Des Moines, Iowa. So. Very good, very good. And we are talking for a very good reason. Uh, you were in San Antonio at our, our expo. Uh, tonight's the gala. You're getting honored because you just had an awesome year last year. Kind of share with everyone roughly what you, if you can remember the number, what kind of revenue you did last year. Big numbers, big revenue. <laughs> <laughs> I believe we were about 1.23 million last that's year. Awesome. Just you. And, just me. And installed, sold and installed. Absolutely. That's that's awesome. That's that's huge. Um, super excited. We're gonna we're gonna you know learn your magic a little bit. Walk have you walk me through a service call in a minute. But before we dig into that, I always love hearing people's stories and how they ended up where they ended up. Uh, so kind of share with everyone. How did you get into the electrical industry in the first place? Well, electrical industry actually uh, started uh, following my dad in his footsteps uh, in commercial printing. And I uh, was talking to my head head pressman one evening and he's like, hey, Johnny, he's like, why, why are you? Uh, you need to go be an electrician. Mm-hmm. And uh, honestly, it came from him. I uh, went and applied. Uh, and within a couple months, I was I was an electrician. There so you go. It was as simple as that. Right. And then so it, you took a couple of years to get licensed and everything. And were you always in, uh, a service electrician or did you work in new construction or anything like that before? Started in uh, new construction, did about three, four years in new construction. And the last 12 has been in the service industry. Was that was that a difficult transition? I mean, you're pretty personal, so it couldn't have been too bad. <laughs> Talking to homeowners from working just on a house or something like that. 
it was a little bit different. Really, the attics, the crawl spaces were the, were the hardest thing to adapt to, not sure. the customers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the that's the not glorious part of the job, right? Exactly. So, uh, how long you said you've been at Wire One for? A little over two years. A little over two years, yep. and you had come from a, a similar SGI kind of background, so you knew the the service system and and you know kind of the process of how a service call runs. Correct. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Four years total in SGI. Very good. Very yep. good. What is uh, what do you guys do for training these days? Or how do you guys keep on top of your game? Because I know you're obviously you're, you're talented at what you do, but you know even great athletes still train and stuff. So what, how, do, how do you guys stay on top of your game? Well, we've uh, we have weekly training meetings every Monday and Thursday. We've got a service manager full time um, in the office. Uh, we we always go through uh, do a little bit of. A little bit of role playing, uh, keeping up on the videos that uh, SGI produces, things like that. Um, you know, otherwise, realistically, the best practice is every service call, every new service call. It's right. a, n- a new time to practice. So. That's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, lots of practice. Um, and I, I'd be amiss if I didn't say Wire One had collectively a great year. You got some really good electricians over there. How many crown champions did you think you rattled off? I believe it's. Five. 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 And yep. your service manager also almost, did he, did he hit crown champ? I, I think he hit 500,000, absolutely. And, and that's while working like part-time in the office. Part-time in and out, yes. Now, are you guys all big personalities like you or is everyone a little different? I think we're all pretty big. <laughs> so, some bigger than others. So Jake's got his hands full. Jake's got his hands full. <laughs> absolutely. He, he started this mess. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's really funny. Now, do you get, uh, you know, do you get... Uh, dispatched any certain types of calls or there's certain like calls or your sweet spot they're like we're always going to send john on on these types or is it just pretty much as they come i can't pretend to know exactly what they do on the front end but i know that we label them uh, sales tech one sales tech two yeah. um so i think the idea is on the front end of things they're always going to try to get their best guy in, in the best place right. so um exactly how they, they they do all that inside of the office i'm not 100 percent sure sure um i just trust the system yeah yeah <laughs> that's great that's great uh, you, you seem very upbeat all the time but uh you know is what do you do when you go into a call is there anything you do to get yourself amped up and excited to talk to someone because not everyone's having a great day right we all have days where we wake up and you're just tired or whatever uh so how do you how do you get yourself in the right mental you know frame of mind to talk to people absolutely uh i listen to a lot of motivational speakers you do um uh, Eric Thomas is one of my favorites. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, so so he he's always got upbeat, chipper. Um, he he even has some little song motivational quotes. Yeah. Um, I'll listen to some some good music too. Yeah. Uh, but basically, it's always uh, mental end zone preparation. That's what I try to do, like right. to reset for every service call. That's great. That's great. Now, as you're as you're going to a call, uh, do you do any um, background on on the home or the, the customer as as you're driving over there, or just before you get there? Uh, to kind of understand maybe what they've had service before or, you know, anything like that, or you just kind of go in and, and see what what's what when you get there? You know, everything's situational. Uh, sometimes I'll do a little bit extra research. Uh, our office girls are really good about, um, you know, doing the research on the front end of things, you know, figuring out if the customer's the homeowner, um, you know, how long they've been in the home, that sort of thing. They'll try to give us as much information as possible. Mm-hmm. Um a lot of times what we should do is pull over and, and take a couple minutes before we get onto the on, on site yeah. and look in the history, uh, you know, to see if I've been there, if one of our other guys have been there. Sure. To, to say that we always do that. Yeah. Uh, you get busy. Exactly. I understand. Exactly. I understand. Very good. So, all right. So you, you pull up to someone's house. I'm, I'm sure you get out, you know, the truck right away and, you know, you don't want to look like you're lingering around and you knock and they open the door, you step aside and, and someone lets you in their house. So what do you do in those first, you know, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes to first kind of get them to calm down. You know, sometimes people call you, they're not always in the the best of moods, right? So how do you kind of start that relationship early on in the service call? Uh, The biggest thing is uh, starting with a big smile. Mm -hmm. Um, Smile goes a long ways. Uh, Compliments go a long ways. Um, you know, you, you try to get on an in, individualized level with every customer. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the biggest thing that I try to do during the discovery, which is roughly the 20 to 30 minute uh, discovery window. You know, we're going over the customer's needs, the uh, reason why they had us out, uh, what their issues are. And we're just trying to, to, to build a relationship with them. OK. Do you, is there anything, you know, small talk, obviously, is a great way to just kind of start the conversation do you, is there any things you bring up or little you know cues weather or you look around the house and try and find interests that we do that kind of stuff yep i uh, a lot of times i mean I, I try to be aware of my surroundings uh i think that's definitely a, a key point um so if they've got 
uh, stone out in the front that says they're a Vikings fan, you know, I'll make yeah. fun of them a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, but, but yeah, like if, if you can tell they're a Hawkeyes fan or an I- Iowa State fan, whatever sure. they are, you know, that uh, the things that are in the people's homes, that's what's important to them. So, mm-hmm. um, and, and that tells you a little bit about the, the customer before you even really know them. Sure. Do you ever try and uh, diagnose maybe the, piece, the people's personality types and, and reflect that? Or like, will you talk to someone who, you know, the busy business person who's took off, you know, and it's on the calls and really doesn't have a lot of time to talk to you. How did you approach them the same way as maybe a, a real quiet housewife who's kind of, you know, shy and stuff like that? How do you, how do you handle the, those different personalities? You've got to kind of fly by the seat of your pants for lack of better terms. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yep. Uh, yeah. You individualize every, no two people are the same. No right. two service calls are the same. Um, you want to try to, to, to run the procedure similarly to, uh, you know, on every call, but, uh, at the end of the day, uh, getting a single housewife to talk over a busy businessman, the, the businessman that's on a phone call, he doesn't have the time to, <laughs> to he doesn't want to talk about football and everything else. So um, you just, you, every every situation is a little bit different. Yeah, you you individualize it to each person. Yep. Sure, sure. Um, I know you, you talk about your credibility because we, we talked <laughs> before we got on camera. When do you talk, you know, share your credibility statement as we always call it with SGI? Do you do that up front or does that kind of happen Sometimes, depending on how the call's flowing, as, as you're walking to the problem, if they take you right away, how do you how do you deliver that? Uh, on a trouble call uh, where they're actually having issues, customers worried, maybe they smelled smoke, uh, something burnt up. Yeah. Um, I, I do the credibility statement a lot sooner in the call because I want them to know that they got the right guy in their house and right. that I'm going to be able to take care of the problem for right. them. Um, want them to, you know, a lot of a lot of times it, it can be high stress, high anxiety sure. for the customer. They're not an electrician. They have no idea what's going on. Um, so so I, I usually start that earlier on a trouble call yeah. on a... You know, new installation as far as like finishing the basement, things like that. Usually I'll, I'll get to know the customer a little bit first and right. then I'll, I'll uh, introduce the credibility statement. Right, right, right. What are, what are some things that you say in your credibility statement? Just to give people an example of maybe a, a young electrician who, who's still kind of learning the service side. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I... I definitely incorporate uh, years of experience and uh, years inside the service industry and uh, let them know that, hey, you know, they're, I, I've been stumped before, but I've never not been able to figure things out. So rest assured you get the, the right guy here today and I'm going to be able to take care of the problem for you. That's great. That's great. Now you talk about discovery and, and asking questions to kind of figure out what's going on. Are there certain questions you always ask, no matter what the call is, to kind of maybe get the homeowner to think about you know, maybe there's other things I need fixed in my house I didn't think about. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I always ask them how long they've been in the home, if they uh, know the age of their home, um, if they've ever had other electricians in the home since they've been there. Um, those are three big key factors that, that at least start opening up conversation. Okay. Very good. Uh, when you talk to them about the idea of a, a whole house inspection, and what do you guys call it a safety inspection yep, or what do yep. you guys use? What, keep, keep a safe inspection. Yes, okay. Sir. There you go. So when, when you talk, you know, what, you know, you, I called you out for this problem, you know, and so obviously I just think you're going to go to the problem and fix it as a homeowner. So when do you kind of introduce this idea of a safety inspection? Once again, there's going to be two different times. If, if we're on a trouble call, we, uh, our procedure is that we're not going to offer the keep it safe right away. We're not going to do that up front. Um, we're going to definitely offer it to every customer, um, but not until we're into a signed circuit diagnosis. That's when we'll go through on a trouble call mm-hmm. and uh, be able to tell them, hey, we're going to do the keep it safe inspection. There are any areas of the home you want us to stay out of uh, while we're doing that. So trouble call, it's going to be after we're into a signed circuit diagnosis mm-hmm. um, on any other call, a new install call. Um, kitchen lighting, basement finish, things like that. Um, we're going to offer that pretty much right away. Okay. Um, so usually, usually we get the uh, the customer kind of goes through we the the issue or the reason why we're out. Uh, we try to get down to the panel, and that's when we start really getting more on a personal level, asking the customer questions. Um, and that's typically when I present it to them. Do people always walk with? Do you always ask them to walk with you uh, during the, your inspection? I prefer it. Yeah. Uh, not everybody does though. Sure. Sure. Um, COVID things have been a little bit different. Oh, yeah, so. that's true. Very true. Very true. <laughs> Absolutely. So, I mean, a lot of, I guess, what you do is just educating people about what's going on in, in their electrical system, right? That's the way I look at it. Okay. Yep. I, I uh, you know, they can look at it like, hey, this guy's trying to sell me something. Or, right. hey, this guy's actually trying to educate me. And I definitely try to uh, lean heavy on the education. 
Support for this podcast comes from Learning Alliance. SGI members, you can gain virtually unlimited access to the vast assortment of high-impact sales, communication, leadership, and management training provided by Learning Alliance by becoming a Total Access member. In addition with Total Access, you gain access to an arsenal of online instructional videos to augment your training at home. You get the in-person and online training for an incredibly small monthly investment. And training is most definitely an investment. Members on average see a return of $3 for every one they spend with Learning Alliance. To sign up, go to the new Learning Alliance training portal on your SGI Hub website or call at 941-702-9623. Welcome back to the show. You're listening to my interview with John Sen, uh, a highly successful electrician with Wire One Electric in Des Moines, Iowa. John sold and installed $1.26 million dollars sold and installed $1.26 million in Des Moines, Iowa last year. Um, so far in this interview, got a lot of good stuff already. I think even the best stuff is here to come. John's going to get into how he explains to homeowners why he has to look at the electrical panel. He talks about how he sells surge protection, smoke detectors, how it communicates their warranties, handles objections, so and all sorts of other really good stuff. Uh, let's jump back into my interview, and I'm sure he'll take it away another nugget or two. So, so you say like, you know, I called you for a bad outlet or whatever, and ultimately you take me to the panel. I, I don't even know what this panel thing does. So how do you explain to people why you need to take a look at the panel, you know, what it is, what you know, role it plays in the home's electrical system? Maybe kind of walk me through that. I, I always uh, tell customers that, you know, the electrical panel is the heartbeat of the electrical system. It's mm -hmm. the, um, this is where I need to be able to go to disconnect power, to be able to safely uh, fix the issues that we have going on within the system. Um, so, so customers always understand um, taking you to the panel. It, it just makes sense. Uh, so, and that gives us a chance to be able to actually uh, uh, be able to bond with the customer a little right. bit more and talk right. to them sure. um, as they're leading us to the, the panel. Mm -hmm. And you just guys just whatever, the conversation just flows, whatever exactly. they take it. <laughs> you got it. Do you talk a lot of surge protection with people? Absolutely. How do you explain, you know, again, don't I got those power strips, isn't that enough? Like how do you explain to people what the value of surge protection? Well, um, I, I definitely let them know now that it's written into code. It was a little bit more difficult before it was sure. actually written into the code. Um, but now that it's code required, um, you know, I kind of do a little bit of a credibility <coughs> statement with them on that. Um, but the biggest thing is, is I let them know that there's equipment that cannot physically be plugged into a surge strip, uh, furnaces, air conditioners. <laughs> right. Uh, you're not going to pull your fridge out and put a surge strip on your fridge. Right. So um, it protects all those appliances in your home's electrical system, and it's backed with a warranty, and we're going to back it with our warranty as well. Okay. So really, it's all about protection. Okay. So you'll start talking, you know, while you're doing the inspection, you'll start talking about stuff like this. Absolutely. Okay, good. You know, one thing, I, I've, I've been doing this a long time now, but I didn't realize when I first got into it, Smoke detectors expire, and I don't think most homeowners realize that, right? They so, don't. so what do you talk? I mean, how do you explain to people, you know, what the value of changing? I guess it's just as easy as explaining that they do expire, right? Or how do you talk to people about smoke detectors and they need to be replaced? Absolutely, uh, that's uh, definitely comes up during our keep a safe inspection. Uh, we're checking the dates on the smoke detectors. A lot of the times, you can tell by the case and the yellowing on the sure. smoke detector itself too. Um, so even if a customer declines a keep a safe inspection, they don't want us coming through the home for whatever various reasons. Um, that doesn't mean that we don't do the safety inspection. Um, that doesn't mean that you, you uh, decide to not be aware of your surroundings at that point. Right. Um, so when I'm talking to the customer, um, even if say they have said, hey, no, I don't want you coming through the house. Hey, uh, Mr. Customer, I noticed that your uh, your smoke detectors are an old case. Uh, guarantee uh, that they're expired, um, and, and you can rattle off some different dates and things like that. And then, sure. then you roll into the credibility statement on letting them know that every major manufacturer uh, recommends a 10-year replacement window. Um, hey, great news, we've got smoke carbon monoxide uh, built into them now. We've got 10-year lithium batteries. So I've got all these different packages that we can put together and give you different options. Okay, and you always say we can give you different options. What are other some critical things that come up in your safety inspection that, that you feel like you always take time to point out to people? Are there other typical things? 
Um, CSST bonding, uh, deficient wiring is going to be a big thing mm -hmm. too. Um, you know, you, you can tell when it's homeowner installed or <laughs> MacGyver special. Sure. You want to look at that. <laughs> sure. Okay. Uh, take a real close peek at the service equipment. Um, yep. You know, making sure that that's running and everything's safe uh, is super important. Um, so really smoke detectors, uh, gas line bonding, service equipment, mm -hmm. uh, deficient <clears throat> wiring, things okay. like that are, are going to be the main cues. Very good. Um, we talked again off camera a little bit, the difficulty of selling diagnostics, you know, this idea, wait, I'm, I'm paying you to come out with a, a dispatch fee and now there's this diagnostic fee. How do you explain to homeowners that, you know, what the, what the value is of that or what you're doing? The most important thing is you got to build value on every call. So on a trouble call, it's a little bit more difficult because the customer's probably a higher stress, higher anxiety situation. They want right. to take you right to the problem and they want to know pricing right away. Right. Um, it's, it's your job to be able to still try to get on some sort of a level and, and we try to look at it from our company standpoint anyway. Uh, we want to try to spend 20 minutes with the customer before presenting pricing. Right. So the biggest thing is, and, and that's not always possible, especially you get the type A customer and um, things like that. So sometimes you got to go purpose over procedure, but yeah. the, the biggest thing is building value value inside of what you are offering them. Right, right. Um, reassurance that you're the right guy for the job. Um, that's definitely a big thing that comes into play on, on circuit diagnose calls. Mm -hmm. What are some of the value items you hit on? Like with, with Wire One, I'm sure you guys offer different guarantees or warranties that are maybe better than, than your competitors. Can you kind of talk about the different value benefits you, you always point out with homeowners? Absolutely. We uh, five-year warranty as long as you follow our recommended repair options. So mm -hmm. um, we're going to come in, we're going to do the circuit diagnose, and if everything's good and it's just one smoking gun, we're going to include that repair inside of the circuit diagnose. Um, otherwise, if we have uh, other recommendations, such as a circuit restoration with pre-devicing and uh, rewiring connections, as long as the homeowner follows uh, those recommended repair options, then we're going to cover everything for a five-year period. Okay, very good. All right, so you, you know, you've seen the problem, you've done an inspection, it's time to, to build some options. Uh, I guess always three options for the homeowner? Three to five, three, absolutely. Three to five, okay. Yep. And what, um, you know, do you, how do you, uh, you know, do you try and, it, I guess it, the question I'm trying to ask is, are there ever limits to how much you'll put in each option, right? Like you don't want to overwhelm a homeowner or do you just always put in there what you see? Slap it on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so all of a sudden, I, you know, I had you come out. I thought it was going to be a simple repair, and I'm looking at three to five options, and they're pretty sizable in cost. How do you explain to people everything that you found in your inspection? Why this is something that's really beneficial to them to have these safety items repaired? Well, ideally, that's when it, when it's great that the customer, if they can join you on the safety inspections right. that way they're seeing it as you're seeing it yep. and you kind of explain it one task at a time but either way when it if it uh, say the homeowner doesn't join you on the safety inspection yep. and you're just presenting with these big options um, I, I usually go over the keep it safe stuff first right. prior to presenting um, and, and I just try to go through one line item at a time and try to educate the customer um, ask you know kind of a show and tell uh, it's their chance to ask me any additional questions I want to make sure that they understand what I'm telling them sure, to. Sure. Um, and then that's prior to rolling into pricing. Very good. And, and your prices are always, you have a finance price first or do you roll into financing if they, they kind of, you know, are a little shocked? So inside of our uh, estimation software, it, it uh, kind of cues them up to let them know that financing is available. Um, through my presentations, I usually go through the presentations on all the different options and then I roll into the financing um, at the tail end. That's okay. that's my typical procedure. Yeah. Um, sometimes there's purpose over procedure and you know you're getting into an expensive repair, uh, the homeowner's joining you, and sometimes I'll just interject it you know, through normal conversation, like, hey, just to let you know, we've got some awesome finance options available, yeah. um, you know, especially if you can tell that this is, that it's snowballing into a larger project. Right, right. and you mentioned to me, all, again, off camera, that you have a, a certain financing that you like to always offer. What, what, what was that? I, I definitely push synchrony financing the mm -hmm. hardest. Uh, I'm probably the only guy at our <laughs> shop that, that does synchrony full, full, full-fledged, yeah. um, 18 month interest free financing, it doesn't get any better than that. Right. Um, I believe in it and customers know that I believe in it. I, it shows that I believe in it, I've used it myself. Right. Um, so, so definitely confidence sells there. Sure, sure. 
All right, so you present the options and then you know you let the person decide. What what do you do if someone's like, boy, that's just a lot of money, I don't know. How do you handle people that are just afraid to, to move forward? Because it is a lot of money. Absolutely, sometimes on big tickets, uh, they're not always gonna close right away. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of times they gotta, gotta ask to the, the husband, the wife, uh, sure. be able to figure things out. Sometimes, you know, pulling in other family members. Um, maybe they want an additional quote just to be able to, to compare pricing. Um, you definitely have the best chance to close the job there on site, so sure. that's what we try to do. Um, you know, if the customer says, hey, you know, uh, I need to talk to my wife, like, oh, that's awesome, I've got a few extra minutes, you know, do we want to maybe give them a call? Right. Um, you know, so, so you definitely want to try to, to steer towards closing the call sure. on site, um, but they're not all going to close on site. Sure. Sure. How do you handle the, the, the I'm wanting the second bid, or have you ever had where people showed you another bid from somebody else? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so as far as we're not going to, we'll price match an apples to apples estimate. Right. Um, that doesn't happen very often because most people don't do exactly what we do. Right. Um, we do things to set ourselves aside from other customers or other electrical contractors. Right. Um, and we know the value that we bring to the table. Right. right. Very good. Very good. Okay. So I, I choose my option and you get to work. Uh, what is what's your process for once the the call kind of wraps up? Do you walk people through what you did, or or how do you kind of you know gracefully kind of leave the house with the person feeling happy about what happened today? Absolutely. You, you whenever uh, you know. So say we come through and we do smoke detectors. We're going to do a walk through, um, show them that we've replaced all their equipment, we've cleaned up after ourselves, mm -hmm. and you always want to ask the customers, "Is there anything else I can do for you? Are you satisfied with the service you've received today?" Um, and, also, uh, that kind of leads into, um, have I earned a five-star review from you? I was going to ask you um, about that. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so that's that point. Um, are there any other little things you'll do for, you know, to kind of, as a wow experience? Do uh, you try and, yeah, I've heard tightening doorknobs, you try to look for those little things as well? Yeah, if, there, if there's something we can do to easily help a customer and, yeah. you know, uh, make their experience a little bit better, make them remember us, we'll absolutely do that. Sure. Um, this spring, I've actually, uh, I, I was throwing customers Girl Scout cookies. Is they, that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> so, so they definitely like that. So, so. you walk in with a, with a box of cookies. Man, I'm going to buy from you right away. You got it, you got it. <laughs> have, you have you drive to St. Louis and do some work for me? Uh, that's funny. Um, all right, so John, why do you think people ultimately buy from you and from Wire One? Uh, I think that uh, we're, we're definitely branded well. Um, we do what we say we're going to do. We're there when we say we're going to be there. Um, we have a, an excellent warranty and people buy from people they like ultimately. So um, that's where it's so important to be able to get on a personalized level with each and every customer. Right. And, then, and like we talked again off, off camera, but you know, Jake really sets you guys up for success too, right? He, he said it with the marketing, he's, he's got it honed in and, and you definitely get right in front of the, the right customers too, right? He knows what he's doing, he puts us in the right play. We trust the system, trust the process, and he trusts us to execute. That's awesome, you guys Absolutely. have a great team. Just last question for you, if you had advice, or maybe you give this, because you normally get the young electricians with you, what, what advice do you give them about how to be successful in the service industry? Um. You know, really uh, being dedicated to your job and executing with the customers. Um, you know, the service industry is tough. It's a tough industry. Um, we've got on-call times. We've got late nights. We never know exactly when we're going to get 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 off work. Um, so I just tell them like it, it's a lot of dedication, but there's also a lot of a uh, lot of reward to be had inside of the service industry as well. Right, right, very good. Well, John, thank you so much for your time, especially when you could be having probably get a couple more hours of sleep or go play, have some fun in San Antonio. So we we appreciate you taking it with us. Been a pleasure, Bob. I appreciate it. All right, thank you, sir. That's John Sen, an electrician and a crown champion with Wire One Electric in Des Moines, Iowa, on how he sold and installed $1.26 million in 2020. Thanks for watching. If you feel like you have a great story to share that would also help other contractors, please email me at bhouchin at yoursgi.com. Also, if you enjoyed today's show, please like, please subscribe. We'll have lots of other future interviews with crown champions with successful residential contractors and with other movers and shakers in the contracting world. You've been watching The Successful Contractor, powered by Success Group International. Support for this podcast provided by Pulse M. Pulse M is the number one review generation platform built for home services. The majority of SGI members use Pulse M for Google reviews, 
customer communication through text messaging, and much more. For more information, please visit pulsem.me. The Successful Contractor Podcast is part of the Success Group International family. SGI is the largest member-owned best practices organization for independent residential services contractors. SGI provides its members a competitive edge through proven proprietary management tools and expertise, marketing programs, training, and group buying power, along with a highly active and eager to help membership. For more information about Success Group International, visit www.yoursgi.com. The Successful Contractor Podcast is a production of the Aquila Investment Group, LLC, All Rights Reserved 2021.